Hey everybody, for the past two weeks I've been down in Utah teaching some deep space workshops and I gotta say they went really well. I learned a lot, I know the students learned a lot, and we all got some amazing images. Today, I want to show you what I learned from this experience because there were some valuable tips. And I hope you guys enjoy the new office here too. You can see I really upgraded from the white walls and the black foam panels. But anyway, the first thing I want to talk about is the gear that the students brought because this really changed everything. For some context, in the past, most of my workshop students have had star trackers like a Skyguider Pro, Star Adventure, and then usually a DSLR and telephoto lens. This works fine, but a lot of students have complained just how stressful it can be and trying to teach somebody who's never used the gear is equally as stressful for me. So what I was really excited about is that for the first time, all of my students in both workshops took my advice and they all had the ZWO AM5 mount. This made everything so much easier. And in fact, I had most of these guys up and running in 20 or 30 minutes each night. I should also stress that most of them had never even used the gear before. That just goes to show you how easy these new setups can be. And that was really my first takeaway from the workshop is that for years I've struggled with star trackers, DSLRs and telephoto lenses. I've made it work because I had to, both for financial reasons and just storage and space concerns. But now that I have the budget and a lot of my students have the budget for it, I really think this new gear is the best way forward because you're getting amazing image quality, a lightweight and portable setup, and you're not spending an obscene amount of money for some of the larger telescopes and things like that. Now I realize this might sound like a sales pitch and to be clear, I'm not getting any money from ZWO. I don't really care what you buy, but I do think that the AM5 is currently the best mount out there for the price, the functionality, and just the ease of use, especially when you pair with an ASIR. So if you're looking to make your life easier and you've got the funds for it, I really think this is one of the best things you can invest in. All right, let's move on to something else I learned, cables. Now, this is something that shouldn't be that big of a deal, but for astrophotography, if you don't have the right cables, you can have a real nightmare of a situation. Now, the issue is that one of my students came with an Icon D850 and a Tamron 150-600, to which again, in the past would have been great, but now that we're all starting to move forward together, that was kind of holding him back. So I let him borrow one of my Red Cats and one of my color cameras, and that was working fine, but we were missing a good USB 3.0 cable. He had a spare, and we're using that one. So what happened was we're going through trying to do the polar alignment and we're just getting this bright white screen in the background even though it's supposed to be taking photos. Then we would occasionally get exposure failure. And overall things were just not working the way they should have. I've never seen it act up like that. Eventually what we tracked it down to was that USB 3.0 cable connecting his, rather my, dedicated astro camera to the ASIR. That was the culprit. Once we got one of the USB 3.0 cables that came with the camera, there was no more exposure failures. There was no more random white screens. Everything worked as intended. And so that would be one of the most important things I can convey to you. If you're having random troubles with your ASIR or maybe your dedicated astro camera, try using another USB cable and that might very well solve the problem. And speaking of cables, one of the most important lessons we all learned during this workshop is the difference between the 12 volt DC plugs and the AC adapters, which are also sold as a way to power your AM5 or your dedicated astro camera or the ASIR. And the problem, well, it's twofold. The first is the power consumption. We had nearly identical setups between two students. They both had the same Jackery battery, the same camera, the same telescope, same mount, everything. But one student used the AC power adapter and plugged that into her Jackery. The other student used the 12 volt DC cable, which I normally recommend. And what we found is that by the end of the night, the student using the AC adapter had completely drained their battery there at about 0%, but the other student who used the 12 volt DC plug had about 50% left on her battery, which is very shocking. So the first takeaway is that the DC connection is much more power efficient and your battery is going to last a lot longer in those scenarios. Another thing that we kind of learned is that when we were doing these tests and they were kind of unintentional, that's all the power equipment she had. So I eventually gave her one of my spare 12 volt cables, but she was having all kinds of just weird problems on her ASIR. Sometimes there'd be an issue with the camera. Sometimes the ASIR itself would seem to have some glitches and they're very unusual to say the least. And I think really what we traced it down to is the fact that she was again using the AC adapter rather than just a straight DC 12 volt connection. 
Therefore, if you are having just kind of weird problems with your setup or you're finding that your battery is dying in the middle of the night, then I'd highly recommend getting rid of those AC cables and swapping over to the 12 volt DC. That'll work a lot better for you. And I know it's normally recommended to power the ASIR separately and potentially even your camera separately. But what I found is that if I just plug in one DC 12 volt cable from my battery to my AM5, then I can power the ASI Air from the output on the AM5. Then I can power my camera's cooling system from one of the power outputs on the ASI Air. Therefore, everything is running off a single 12 volt cable plugged into my Jackery battery. And that's worked very well for me for many years now. Another thing I learned is that the ASI Air interface can be very confusing for beginners. I've been using it for many years now, so it's never been an issue for me. But a lot of these guys just were having trouble knowing where to go next. That'd be one of the things I would like to see Zibio improve on is just having maybe even like a beginner's mode, right? Where you have step one and it's all just laid out in button form. So you can just click on it and then do it. Maybe you have a little check mark you can click. That way you know it's done. For example, step one, focus your telescope. Step two, do your polar alignment. Step three, use the Sky Atlas feature to find the object you want to photograph and get it centered up. Step four, turn on your guiding and get that calibrated. Step five, recheck your focus if you need to. Step six, do your auto run, get that all configured. And then for step seven, maybe sit back, relax, and wait for your first photo to complete, and then take a look. Now, I don't know if they're ever gonna get around to doing something like that, if that even makes sense from their point of view at ZWO, but I think it might be a pretty good idea just to have that kind of beginner mode at least organize the interface so it's a little bit more streamlined for beginners especially. And one of the final things I want to mention is just how nice it was to be back in Kanab under a truly dark sky. There was a couple nights I'd go out at like 3 a.m. by myself when everybody had left and just sit out and enjoy the view. It really does feel like a whole different planet down there compared to up here in Washington where you have a lot of light pollution and trees blocking your view. But being down there was amazing because we could finally shoot in LRGB again with the monochrome camera. You can't really do that up here in a light polluted area as well as we would like. So I'm really excited to share with you guys some of the photos that we captured while we were there. And that probably leads me to the last thing I wanted to mention is that just how important it is to gather enough data. In the earlier workshops I used to teach with the star trackers, we were lucky to get an hour or two of data per object because usually everybody is really excited to do Andromeda, Orion, the Pleiades, and all these other types of things. But on this workshop, I had everybody focusing in on the four to five hour mark per target. And so essentially we would shoot one object from the time it got dark till around midnight or 1 a.m. Then I'd have everybody swap over to their second target for the night and let that run until sunrise. And then I'd bring all the gear in in the morning. So we had four nights together. Each night they'd get two targets. So by the end, they still had a really nice list of objects and the data was clean and the photos are great. So my final bit of advice for you is that if you're still fairly new to astrophotography, try to get at least four hours on your target, even if that takes two or three nights to accomplish. And for myself, when we were doing our really in-depth imaging, me and my girlfriend, we were trying to get the ghost nebula and iris and things like that. We would let the setup run all night long, just gathering data on one target. And even though we'd spend, you know, upwards of eight hours per night, we still wish we had more data. So almost makes me want to move back down there just so I can be out there even longer. And that's all I've got for you today. I realize this is kind of more of an informal video, but there were some important tips I learned and I wanted to pass those on to you guys. The big takeaway again for me was swapping out those AC adapters for the straight 12 volt DC cables. That should give you much better results. Also make sure your USB 3.0 cables are legit and they've come from the manufacturer that we know they work as intended. If you are still noticing problems though, try swapping it out and that might fix some of those issues. In addition, if you wanna make your life easier and you can afford it, consider getting the AM5 and ASI Air, a dedicated astro camera and some sort of telescope. That will have some hurdles at first, but at the end of the day, with a little practice, you're gonna be getting vastly improved images over the DSLRs and it's gonna make your life easier because for most of the night, you can just sit in the house, relax and check the iPad at any time. And then finally, if you can get at least four to five hours of data on your object, that's a great starting point. Of course, more is always better, but this is a whole nother topic I want to save for a separate video. So that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching. I also want to mention I now have YouTube memberships. I figured I'd turn that back on because I'm going to be doing a lot more content on here on YouTube throughout the winter. So if you want to check that out, I think you just hit the join button, something along those lines. 
but there's going to be some office hour q a type deal where we just sit here you ask your questions i can walk you through the processing or maybe you have gear questions that's something we'll be doing again through that youtube membership so so i've got for you today and i'll see you guys in another video